Good morning. It is time for Cup of Hope. I'm Stephanie Winslow, and I am so grateful to be here with you this morning to bring a message from the Word of God and to join together with you as we lift up our cups and ask our Lord to fill us up with the hope that He has in store for us this morning. God is so good and He is so faithful that when we come to Him, when we come with our hearts, our minds, and we're, we're wanting to engage with him, he is always faithful to engage right back with us. And when we read his word, when we sing songs of worship and songs of praise, he uses those times to fill us up and give us just what we need to make it through the day, to make it through whatever the trial is that we're walking through or um, the, the high notes of life and also uh, those low points of our life too. He is always with us and faithful and consistently giving us just what we need. So today is no different. So if you have come here with an empty cup of hope, um, let's agree together that by the end of our time together this morning that God will use the power of his word to give you, to feed you just what you need to fill up that cup full to overflowing so that as you go about your day today, you can make an impact on the world around you. Um, and, and you can, you know, like a, more than just make it, right? We wanna really thrive in this life and live lives that are useful for God, that we can participate in his vision and his mis mission on this earth. And um, that the great mission would be that all would come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So what is your role in that today? How can you um, engage with the world around you, uh, whether it's a, a friendly smile, a warm embrace, a pat on the back, whether it is um, the politeness of letting somebody go in front of you in line or whatever it might be. How can you be Jesus to the world around you right where you're at today? Um, before we dig into this word, um, today I titled the message, um, I think, Heavenly Heritage. <laughs> um, I'm now blanking what I actually gave the title. But anyway, the point is that these verses, this is a verse that I feel like I have read so many times. And it's almost one of those verses that you, you read it so much or you've heard it so much over your life growing up, especially if you've grown up in the church, that it's lost its power. Um, that it's lost its um, true meaning and and just the, the amazing um, blessing really that's found in these words of, of scripture and it's it's all about having this heavenly heritage and I have read this verse so many times that I typically breeze past that part of the verse and get to the end which is the part that I more, I think more resonate, have resonated with, but as I have kids of my own now and, um, you know, looking at what does it look like for our family to have the heritage, I'm so blessed to, to be living in the heritage of my grandparents, to be living in the heritage of my great grandparents, the heritage of my parents uh, and their life of faith. And so that is, I'm looking at my kids now and I'm just praying over them, praying over their rooms. Yesterday I spent some time just in their rooms praying over them, that their rooms would be a, a place where God's spirit would dwell, that um, that they would, when they enter their room or when their friends enter their room, that they would encounter God there, that God would speak his um, truths and his promises over them as they sleep. So this is a blessed heritage and so we miss out when we don't um, see or recognize that we are living in a heritage that God has given to us. He, we are, as his sons and daughters, we have a blessed heritage. So here's what this verse says. One, 1 John 4, 4. You are from God, little children, and you have overcome them because greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. And like I said, that last part, that is the part that I have kind of clung to. Um, but even like I said, I've, you've heard it so much, I've heard it so much that it has kind of like dwindled in its meaning for me. But today, as I was reading this, these words, this verse became reignited as I think about it in terms of gratitude. 
um, this whole week, you know, we've been talking about gratitude and having a posture and a heart of gratitude toward God. And this is one of those things that I believe that God has for us to remind us that you are from God. You are from Him. You are created in His image. You are His son. You are His daughter. And therefore, because you are that, greater is He that is in you. It's that heritage that He has placed in you. That you have the power to overcome whatever obstacle is in your, in your path. You have the power to, to live today with joy and peace and comfort and hope and full of faith because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The rest of the world has, that hasn't accepted Christ, they don't have that heritage. They don't have that kind of power. They don't have the ability to overcome. They don't have the power to fight the battles that are placed in front of them with the power of God because they aren't sons and daughters of him. You who are believers, you who are called according to the word of God, you who have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior and you are living and walking under his authority, you have the power to overcome whatever it is that has been placed in your path. So if you are fighting a battle today, if you are fighting a war for your family, for the heritage of the next generation, if you are fighting a disease, you're fighting an addiction, you're fighting... Um, uh, just control, you're battling control. You you know, you like to have control over every little piece of life. And then it's something that you need to lay down. Whatever it is that you need to lay down and let go of today, re will you remember that first of all, that you are a child of God. He says, you are from God, little children, and you have overcome them. So in this verse, it's, you know, talking about the things of this world. We have overcome the things of this world. We have overcome the, the powers of the principalities that exist in this world because we have this power of Jesus Christ living in us. Let us not forget today whose we are and who we are as we embrace this heritage. And, and would that give us this mindset of gratitude that God saw fit to place in each of us his Holy Spirit that would give us that power um, to overcome, as this verse tells us, that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. But it starts first, it starts first by us recognizing that we are from God. We are from God. This power to overcome doesn't come to us because uh, you know, I'm, I'm gifted or because I you know, have this skill or that skill or, or I'm smarter than this person or I have this degree. My ability to overcome has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with me other than the fact that I choose to say yes to Jesus. And that's it. It has nothing to do with, with my... Um, you know, business prowess, it has nothing to do with my relationships, it has nothing to do with my network, it has nothing to do with who I know, who I don't know. My power to overcome has everything to do with the fact that I am a daughter of Jesus Christ, the living and one and only uh, savior of this entire earth, the God of all creation. I am his daughter, you are his daughter, you are his son. And so because of that, we have this great power to overcome every obstacle that is placed in front of us. There is no weapon formed against us that pro can prosper. That's also what the word, word tells us. And if we can start being grateful for these promises and start believing these promises, then we can live free and whole and have peace and joy that we so want. Let's start believing what the word tells us. Let's start believing the verses that we read about in scripture. Let's start being grateful for what God has told us and spoken over us. Let's be grateful for this heritage. This, this thousands of years, men and women who have gone before us, who have lived lives um, that have been pleasing to God. I'm reading right now a book by Smith Wigglesworth, a, a, a man who had a wonderful healing ministry in the early 1900s and uh, through 19, mid 40s. Uh, that is a man with an awesome heritage of faith when he able, was able to recognize what God said. He be actually believed the Bible, believed that he had the power to heal, just like the disciples. Crazy! I know! 
know. It's crazy to think that we can actually believe what these words tell us and what will happen when we start standing firm on the word and stop running away from it. Stop believing, well, this couldn't be for me. Stop believing that, well, God must have meant that for someone else. No, he means it for you. You are his son. You are his daughter. You are called out of the darkness and into the light. So let's step up and step into these promises that he has for us. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have overcome. You have the power to overcome. Claim it. Because the word actually you have overcome is it's already been done. Right? Because you have the power of Jesus in you. It's already been done. You have the power. And don't forget that you are God's. You are his. You are um, his son and his daughter. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you so much for your word. My heart is so full this morning, full to overflowing with gratitude toward you for uh, giving us this power to overcome. But also just the fact that we have this heritage, that we get to live as your sons and daughters on this earth. We don't have to wait until uh, our life eternal in heaven. We get to experience that truth here and now. God, you have equipped us. You have given us just what we need to overcome every obstacle that is placed in front of us because you say that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater are you, Lord, because you are in me. Greater are you, Holy Spirit, because you are in me. Greater are you, Jesus Christ, because you are in me than he that is in the world. I can overcome, I have overcome, we have overcome. So I thank you for that, Lord, and I pray over each and every home right now that we would begin to, to claim and to actually believe what your word tells us, Lord. I pray, pray that we would be overcomers on this earth. I pray that we would step into the, in the heritage of faith because we are your sons and daughters, that we wouldn't uh, shy away from the gifts and the blessings that you have for, that, for us, but that, you would, that we would step firmly and boldly into these places and um, claim the victory that has already been won because you have told us that we are victorious. We are sons and daughters of Jesus Christ, of our, the great Lord of creation, and there is nothing that we have to fear because we are overcomers by your great grace and mercy over us and your desire to be in relationship with us, Lord. So I thank you and praise you for all this. May your Holy Spirit be released on each and every home uh, and that you would build them up today, that you would fill their cups with hope, that you would um, ignite your presence in and over them today. In Jesus' name, I pray all this. Amen and amen. Well, thank you for being with me this morning. And I, I just, I believe that you will leave here today. I'm claiming this for you, that you will leave here this moment uh, filled full to overflowing so that you can go into your work. You can go into what your family life, go into whatever it is that you're walking into today with power and re being reminded that you are an overcomer today. Be blessed and be well. Bye-bye.